Wouldn't it be nice if your pins could actually rank in the Pinterest algorithm, drive more traffic for your business and actually get you leads? Well, lucky for you, I have an awesome video today teaching you how to do keyword research and SEO on Pinterest in order to get your pins to rank in the algorithm, get indexed faster, and to drive more traffic to your websites and your socials. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and to hit the bell to be notified every single time I post a new video here on the Cordial Media YouTube channel. Next video is actually about how to enable rich pins, so you're definitely going to want to subscribe for that one. I've actually helped hundreds of bloggers, influencers, and e-commerce businesses learn how to do keyword research that has helped their account grow all the way up to 10 million monthly views and drive incredible amounts of traffic to their website every single month. And now you get to learn my exact framework on how I like to do keyword research as well. In this video, we are going to talk about multiple ways to do keyword research on Pinterest, but of course, the best way to do keyword research will be listed at the end of this video. So make sure you tune in until the end to stick around for that particular method. Okay, without further ado, let's dive into the first way to do keyword research. So the first way is actually through ads. Now, hear me out over here. You don't have to necessarily purchase an ad or run a campaign to do keyword research. However, there is a feature within the advertising campaign tool on Pinterest that allows you to do keyword research for your ads. But that keyword research is just as valid and amazing for your personal pins as well. So let me show you in the computer where you're going to find those keywords using the advertising platform on Pinterest. First thing you're going to click when you log into your Pinterest account is the ads tab right over here. Then you're gonna to wanna to click create ad. Now, don't be scared, we're not about to create an ad, we're not about to put money into anything, which we just have to click this button in order to get to the section where we can do our keyword research. So just if you're in case you're worried about accidentally starting your campaign, just pause it, click pause and nothing will start over here. Okay. Don't put a budget. Don't do any of that. And then you can either click continue or you can click the ad group that's already pre-made for you right here. Also keep in mind that like you could have selected like any of these except for this one. Um, you could select any of these four in order to do your keyword research with ads. So then you want to click the camp, the ad group. Um, and you're going to scroll to over here where it says choose your own. Select choose your own. And then under keywords and interests, you're gonna click the drop down menu and then you're gonna click add keywords. And over here, this is where you're going to do keyword research. Now let's say you have a blog post on um, white dresses. You are going to type white dresses and see what populates. Okay, nothing's populating. Let's see if we type dresses. Okay, if we type dresses, things start to populate. Let's see what happens if I just type dress. You get a whole bunch of really weirdly written keywords for some reason, but over here is where it starts to get interesting, where you can start pulling actually interesting keywords. So simple dresses get actually 5 million plus um, monthly views or searches on the platform. And so that could potentially be a long tail keyword that you could integrate within your uh, profile or pin descriptions. Um, summer dresses might be another one. If we click see more cute dress ideas, you know, so the more you go down, the smaller this will get. Eventually you'll get to like much smaller searches. At this point, I think dress is a little too um, narrow. If I type summer dress, um, you get a lot more searches here too. Um, and eventually, again, as you keep decreasing, you will find searches that are smaller. And the reason why you maybe want to find searches that are smaller is because it might be easier for you to rank for them if you are a brand new account. So something to keep in mind here as well. But this tool is awesome for doing keyword research um, because it actually gives you the stats over here additionally. Plus you can just like do a little plus and like collect your long tail keywords and copy them and paste them um, throughout your pin descriptions or, or board descriptions or board titles really, really easily. 
The second way that I like to do keyword research is by utilizing the Pinterest trends tool. If you look up trends.pinterest.com, it will populate all of the latest trends in three locations worldwide. You have the trends in Canada, the US and the UK. I like the trends in the US because I feel like they are the most accurate and representative of what's actually going viral on the platform at the moment. The reason being is that a lot of Pinterest users or really the majority of Pinterest users are still from the United States. And so if something is trending in the United States, it's always best to capitalize on those trends. What's great about the trends tool is that you can actually do research on specific search terms that are trending at the moment or that are starting to pick up steam in the algorithm, which you can capitalize on in real time. Another amazing feature of the trends tool is that it gives you a timeline of when certain search terms start to pick up steam in the algorithm. And so it allows you to actually plan your content regarding trending searches throughout the year. The idea here is to create content about four weeks before a search term starts to go viral so you can capitalize or maximize the amount of traffic that you can generate for a specific piece of content related to that trending search. Let me show you exactly how I like to type keywords in the trends tool and how I like to utilize it for all the niches, not just the niches listed on the main page. When you are doing keyword research on the trends tool, you have to keep in mind that you're not doing keyword research for evergreen content, but really more content that is trendy. Now there is such thing as trendy evergreen content, but I mean like trendy in the sense that things can be seasonal, um, things can be trendy that's like particular to the moment in time, um, things like that. So this is what this tool is more geared towards as opposed to just like evergreen content that's good like all year for years and years and years, right? But let's keep on going with our example of white dresses. So if I, if I have a blog post on white dresses, maybe there's a search term right now that's more popular um, regarding white dresses. So let's see what populates when we type white dress. So because I'm currently filming this near, uh, we're in May, so summer's coming, um, white dresses are more interesting to people on the platform. And so this search term, this long tail keyword, is a search term that is being looked up particularly right now. And that would be awesome to add in my pin description or board regarding my piece of content on white dresses. And so what's great about um, this tool is that it also gives you related trends on about this topic. So right now graduation dresses are of interest. The wedding dresses are gonna start picking up steam, mini white dress, um, white mini dress, I mean, white summer dress and just white dress. So this is how I like to use the trends tool. If I wanna plan like ahead of a season, then I will do the keyword research on here as well. So let's say like the halt for Christmas, for example, if we were to type Christmas, we can plan around what trends around Christmas. So Christmas decor ideas, this would be a great blog post to think about and write around July and then like maybe publish it around September. So it can really pick up, it could really capitalize on the uh, trend that will occur between these months here from September to beginning of January. So this is how you can use the trends tool for your own keyword research as well. Comment below if you even knew that Pinterest had a trends tool or if you just learned this from this video today. Method number three for doing keyword research is through the related search terms. So when you click a search term on Pinterest and you start to scroll down until you find the related search terms, it gives you a good indication of how Pinterest is going to rank your content based on a specific search term. So if you group the related search terms with your own search term, it can help guide Pinterest as best as possible as to where to place your piece of content in its algorithm and within your niche. Remember that when you're doing keyword research, the idea here is to jot down all of the long tail keywords that you are picking up on. Of course, ideally you want to utilize long tail keywords as opposed to shorter tail keywords or one word keywords because it'll help guide your content throughout the algorithm more easily. The more specific you are about a search term, the easier it is for you to rank and the easier it is for Pinterest to place you. To give you an example, if you are utilizing the keyword recipes, you will get lost in the mess of recipes that are already available on Pinterest. 
But if you narrow your long tail keywords for something a bit more specific, Pinterest will have an easier time indexing you. For example, instead of just talking about recipes or even chicken recipes, that's quite big as well, maybe you want to write a blog post or a piece of content on fried chicken recipes. That is a much more specific long tail keyword that will help your content rank and get those site visits as well. You can even take it a step further and really elongate your long tail keyword to be even more specific in the algorithm. For example, you can name your blog post something like fried chicken recipes for family dinner night, something like that, for example. And that whole long tail keyword is also highly searched on Pinterest and therefore will allow you to rank more easily in the algorithm with that piece of content. This brings me to method number four in how to do keyword research, and that is actually through the tags. Now tags are not seen everywhere. You can find them on story pins and you can find them on video pins. And so when you are creating tags for those types of pins, you can also collect those tags as long tail keywords or related searches. The tags that I'm talking about are located here. So first of all, story pins have been, has been renamed to idea pins, just as an FYI. So to find said tags, you can go under create and click create idea pin and you will land on this page and either you can create a new one or look at your drafts. Like in my case, I have the draft over here. So let me click on my draft and I will show you where you can find um, related topics, tags and things like that that you can use as long tail keywords. So they're right over here. So ongoing with the example of white dresses, if I type white dress, two tags come up. So lace wedding dress and short dress. Let's say wedding dresses are, it's not, your blog post is not about wedding dresses, then skip this one, but you could use short dress as a long tail keyword. Um, maybe going a bit more narrow, if we just type dress, party dress comes up, um, maxi dress, summer dress. So these are just a bunch of different tags that you can utilize as long tail keywords um, within your pin descriptions and word descriptions. Tags are based on interests actually. And so Pinterest places your content in its algorithm based on its interests, on related interests and with keywords. And so if you are utilizing the tags, which are more interest based as your long tail keyword strategy or paired with your long tail keyword strategy, you can mesh the two together and help indicate to the algorithm a lot more easily where to place your content as well. Keep in mind that throughout all of these methods for doing keyword research, you can merge some of these strategies together and you can simply choose to only use one method. It's completely up to you. It's also a matter of testing what's going to work for you and what's going to work for your content and your bandwidth. Okay, this brings me to the most desirable way and the most simplest way for doing long tail keyword research and that is by utilizing you guessed it, the search bar. What's amazing about the search bar which is, and that's what I use the most is that you can see really what populates searches that really do populate and the searches that populate first when you type in a keyword are the ones that are the most looked up on Pinterest throughout the year. Now you don't know at which point they pick up more steam in the algorithm throughout the year, but you know at least at the very least that those searches are consistently being looked up and that your content has a good chance of being found because those searches are being looked up. Again, it's always ideal to go with a longer tail keyword as opposed to a shorter one. However, you can still find searches that populate that are longer tail keyword and that work for your business and to help you rank more easily in the algorithm too. You wanna be mindful of not competing too much with in shorter tail keywords um, because there's a lot of pins for those shorter tail keywords. Because keyword research is such a crucial element of building a Pinterest strategy, I have created an expert's guide to building a personalized Pinterest traffic strategy for your account, which you can download completely for free in the description box below. Keyword research is only one crucial element of the entire process when it comes to creating a strategy. And so this guide will actually explain every step that you need to take in order to go ahead and create the perfect strategy for your business. Now you know how to do the most awesome keyword research for your niche and for your online business. Make sure that you also learn how to claim your websites and your socials by checking out this video right here. I will see you guys in the next video and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.